Well, most times these stories write themselves. You know, things start off and you think they're going to be one thing, but a lot of times they end up being another. When the last opportunity you get for somebody to do a story on you to say the spotlight is growing dim on Clark, you think it's kind of over. Uh-huh. Not at all. Underestimated and still I made it In the book of hard knocks I'm highly educated Nobody told me looked over but still dedicated Played in the league for 13 I ain't gotta be favorite Two Super Bowls, Honolulu I stood with the greatest The thing is this, it's never rich I'm good with my neighbors DB Precision, television Ain't asked for no favors Numbers don't lie, neither do pictures Just look in the papers No backing down or turning back Part two of the movie Never the biggest But it takes more than two just to move me Ain't got a life what I'm saying, just watch me go to work and tackle all of these topics right here on Face First. Look, man, this is a, a very special Face First for me. Uh, get an opportunity to bring in James Harrison, right? Former All Pro, former Pro Bowler. This never goes away. Defensive Player of the Year, right? Super Bowl champions. The question is, right? Is it's, 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 it's plural. plural. It's plural on that, right? And. All-time tough guy, well, at least people think you're tough, but you're actually not. You just look this way, and that's why they call you D. Okay. I, right? I, I, I'll, I'll let you roll with that. Thank you. Me. But also, okay. too, so what you got to do, being that this is my show, you got to make me look tougher to people than they truly believe I am. Okay. So if you allow me to say certain things about you right. and not punch me and in the face. And don't, yeah, don't, don't react to it. See right, what I'm saying? Right. They be like, well, shoot. Yeah, Ryan shoot. Get some, yeah, Ryan got some credibility. Street you know? credit. Yeah, Ryan Street might credit. go ahead and put a hand on somebody. That's why he ain't say nothing back. You see what I'm saying? I got you. That's, that's the deal. That's, I, you just know don't me, go brother. too far. Though. I'm not going to go too far. Right. I know better because right. I've been around. Okay. But so now, so like people see you, right? You just heard all those accolades I listed. But I don't think a lot of people understand how you got started in the NFL, that it wasn't coming from a Florida State. It wasn't a first round draft pick. <laughs> It wasn't, it wasn't any of those things. Man, talk about a little of uh, coming from Kent, but also being cut the ways you were cut year in, year out, and then finally making the team. Okay, so, I mean, I could go back further than that. Like, my, my original journey started in, like, high school with everybody else, but I had top offers from a lot of the schools, but I did a lot of self-destructive things right. that limited my offers, and the only person that was left was Kent State. Mm -hmm. So I ended up going to Kent and – you know, it's but you a D, though. It's a, it's, but it's not it's not a parental power D one. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So it's a regular little small D one. The numbers I had were good, but it's Kent State. So obviously I went undrafted. Um, I was actually a package deal, bro. So they, it was a they wanted this fullback that they had. He's, he, I don't even know where he's at anymore. Fullbacks don't even play in the league no yeah, more, though. Yeah. <laughs> so. And they needed another linebacker. They needed an extra body. So I actually came as a package deal because they actually wanted somebody else. And the agent that I had at the time, which I ended up firing, was like, I got a linebacker, too. Right. And, I was, and they, I was, but agents do that. Right. They just do that. Right. And, you know, I ended up, you know, being a package deal. So I get to, uh, I get to Pittsburgh and do, I don't even know if you know this, the first day I get there, I am late. I done missed the whole OTA practice. I get out the car. I got an 89 Cutlass. I got a, I got a, I got a two by four holding up the back seat. Right. I get there. First, I'm sitting at home. My phone rings. They like, hey, where you at? I'm like, I'm getting ready to but who, leave. Who? Did the boys call you? No, it was, it was. Um, I think it might have been like the player development person at that right. time called me. And he was like, right. hey, where you at? You know. So um, what, Ray Jack? Yet? No, it wasn't Ray Jack. Ray Jack was already gone. I got it. So he's like, hey, we're about to, you know, we're about to start. Where you at? I'm like, I'm on getting ready to leave. It's like, you supposed to be here like right now. I'm like, oh shit. So I take off. I get there, pull into the parking lot. I'm parking, right? I get out the car. Who's the first person I see walking out of the indoor facility? Either Coach Coward or Kevin. Bill Coward. <laughs> I already knew it, dog. I was like, this shit is not gonna go good. He gave me the little jaw look, grin, went in, you know, did my thing. Went through the whole process, and for me, my biggest thing was like trying to get a grip of the defense. I couldn't understand it. Mm -hmm. So, my first year, dude, I would literally stop in the middle of the play and be like, "Hey, they start motioning here so and there." You, but you, you made it. Did you make it through camp to the practice squad your first year? Right, I made right, it through okay. camp to the practice squad right. my first year. So, that's what I'm trying to get to. Is that 
like, I would stop in the middle of the play, dog, and just be like, hey, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing, take me out. <laughs> right. Like, just like, literally like that. Right. Ended up, like you said, making the practice squad. So I ended up getting cut. They called me, it was like, we're gonna bring you back to the practice squad. So I made the practice squad that year. I played all the way throughout uh, practice squad that year until we played Baltimore. Baltimore, I got to play on special teams that year. And we went into the playoffs, I think ended up losing to like uh, Tennessee or somebody. Mm -hmm. Came back the next year, I made the active roster. Still kind of didn't know what the hell I was doing. Right. But I made the active roster. So on Monday, I made the active roster. You know, you off on Tuesday. Yep. Came in on Wednesday. Got done with practice on Wednesday. And they released me. They cut you. They brought in the dude, i never forget his name, doing that Eric Flowers. He was a first round pick at one point in time. Mm -hmm. And Cowers was like, yo, we're bringing him in. We want to see what he can do. And if da da da. But you, then, did, you, you the dude they play with, though, like, we could take him off the roster, right. put him back on the roster. Right. So whatever. he's like, you got any questions? I'm like, I don't got no questions. I'm like, yeah. I started leaving, like, in the middle of what him and explained to me. I'm like, what I'm saying is not going to change your, your, you know, what you're doing. Looks, so I really have nothing to say. So I leave. I go and I sit around for about four weeks. They pick me back up. They put me on practice squad for another three or four weeks at that time. And then they release me again. And I just sit out that whole year. Right. Nothing's going on. Nothing's happening. Right? So what would you do throughout the year? Were you just working out? Just, just working waiting? out. I, I just went back home. I, you know, you don't get a lot of money. It was like 60 yeah. grand, whatever, but I didn't spend. So I had enough to be able to save up, do what I need to do and still work out and not so, have to go get a record. Yeah, but job. you at your like, were you at your parents' house though? No, mine. I'm about to say, man, because all the time with yeah. your parents, that can be difficult. Well, you got to realize, ain't no games. I'm, the, I'm the youngest of 14 and for me, like you said, I wasn't a first round pick. I wasn't drafted at all. So. Right. I didn't have the pre-notion of where everybody's like, hey, can I get this? Can you help me with that? Okay. Like, that was nipped in the bud before it even started. And my parents, obviously, is like, yo, this is what it is. This is what right. you got to do. And sure. just, just keep it moving. So long story short, I end up getting cut that last time, and I'm just sitting out the whole time. I go, and I'm trying to get a hold of my agent. I can't get a hold of this dude, right? And I'm like, all right, I'm going to get rid of him. So I ended up hiring my agent that I had for the rest of my career. So I call. I'm like, yo, I'm about to, like, I can't get a hold of him. He's like, you just write him a letter telling me no, fired. It's easy. I'm like, all right, cool. He's done. I wrote that letter before. Right. So he, after I do that, he makes a call. Baltimore had been looking for me for like six weeks. They couldn't get a hold of my agent. So they send me, that was the off season. That's when they had NFL Europe. Right. So they end up sending me to NFL Europe. Got you into NFL Europe. Oh yeah. So they send me to NFL Europe. So you go to uh, you go to Florida right. for four weeks for training camp. Now this is back when it's true two a days. Yeah. And this coach we had, this dude was a nut, man. We do two a days, and on Sunday we got a break. We only did one practice and then a pool workout. That was our break. Right. Right. That's did not that, a break. Yo. That's not a break. Yeah. The CBA, the CBA right now kicked that dude. He Boom. can't do nothing. Dude. So we did that, and then you fly over. I was playing for, uh, they allocated me to uh, Dusseldorf, Germany. I was playing for the Rhine Fire. So they allocated me over. We fly over there. You're in regular coach seats, right? Next to guys the same size as you. How Ten and a half hours. Golly, y'all. It's a straight flight from Florida up to uh, Dusseldorf. Ten and a half hours, bro. The worst flight ever in my life. But it made you feel like you was in NFL Europe, though. Like you oh, yeah. You definitely you knew you felt like you was in the NFL. No. <laughs> right. No. So now you, you're, you, you're getting, it's like, you're getting paid like a thousand bucks a week, which is getting cut in half. Right. Because they're taxing you there and in the States. And now you cannot live on that. So now you got to use that to actually just have food and stuff. Yeah. To eat on there, right? <laughs> It was the worst experience of my life, but it made me grit and grind down when I got back. So I'm over there for five weeks, and I ended up getting hurt. My knee, something went wrong with my knee. Ended up coming back, went to Birmingham, Alabama, where they, a health software, they do your rehab. Yeah. I get there on a Monday. They tried to send me back that Saturday. Back to the NFL, NFL Europe? Europe. Back for four, four, what would have been four more weeks of a season. 
So you just told him, nah, I ain't going or? Talk to the health dude out there. He's like, I'm like, dude, I really don't like my knee. He's like, listen, you don't really want to go back. We can just do rehab. You, and we could work it out to where you could stay here. Right? He was cool with it. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, I really don't want to go real back. Zito. Yeah, I'm like, I really don't want to go back. Right. So we worked it out to where I just do my rehab there. And then when it was done, you go to Baltimore, go back to Baltimore, and you go into their training camp mm -hmm. and go from there. So I get back to Baltimore, and I'm there for the first week. And we don't even practice. I don't practice. I'm like, this shit weird, right? You don't practice? I don't practice. Like the all, the NFL practice. Europe, all the NFL okay. Europe dudes don't practice. I got you. I'm like, this, this shit weird, but I'm like, all right, whatever. So the next week come, and we practice. I practice one day, and Ozzy called me up. was like, hey, it's a numbers thing. Right. We need to pick up a tight end, so we're going to have to release you. I'm like, all right, cool, whatever. So I hop in the car. I'm driving back to, you know, back to Ohio, whatever. It is what it is, and I get a phone call. It's Daniel Wilcox. He's a tight end, you know, to play for Baltimore. Yeah. We played the NFL Europe and Ryan Fire together. He calls me. He's like, hey. I'm like, what's up, bro? What you doing? He's like, I ain't, you know, I ain't doing that. I'm driving home. What's going on? He's like, hey, I'm about to be there with you. I'm like, where? He's like, Baltimore. They just picked me up. Oh, so they, they let you go for the homie. Yes. <laughs> so he... I'm like, bro. Like, I'm like, I'm right. like, at least they wasn't lying. He like, right. what? I said, they told me they had to release me to pick up a tight end. I said, they picked you up and they let me go. Right. So do it like this. He yeah. Driving this way, you driving that way. Yeah. Right. So, uh, you know, I get back and um, I'm just sitting around, sitting around, and it's like maybe a week or two at the most mm -hmm. before training camp is gonna start. And I'm like, you know what? I'm like, I'm gonna do everything I gotta do. I said. I'm going to give everything, and, you know, if it don't work out, then I'll just get a regular job like everybody else. And I'm like, if I don't end up getting picked up. What was going to be your regular job like everybody else? Dude, a regular nine to five, bro. You can't work in the office. I've been around you long enough. You cannot bro. work. You, you can't. Do I got a CDL. I was going to just drive. That, that's what you're going to have to do because you bro. can't be in HR. You for sure can't be in customer Dude, service. Dude, listen, man. My you're, HR skills have went up. That's what I'm saying, and they still suck. They decent. So they're not decent, bro. Like you, you are a con artist for sure. Uh, you, 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 you make people like you somehow. I don't make people watch, like me. They just watch. do. It's natural. I know why I like you. I'm talking about, but every now and then we meet other people who truly have an affinity for you. Yeah. And I don't understand it. Cause I listen to you talk to these people. You, you're not nice. You're <laughs> kind. You're a kind person. You're giving. Oh. I love you. I got, right. it, I got it, I got it, I got Huge it. Huge heart. Great soul. Well, when you got 13 mm -hmm. brothers and sisters, yeah. you got to learn, either you're going to learn to fight a lot or you're going to learn to share. It's a combination. This is a combination, yeah. right? So you do all those things. Regular job, though, it was going to be driving. It's going to be, listen, it's going to be, hey, that's a regular job. You got, <laughs> hey, products got to get around somehow. Products got to get around. You know what I'm saying? All right, so 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 now after, the, after you decide that you going to have to get a regular job, is, is that where the grind came from that so, made you who you were? No, man, man, my grind started a long time ago, you know, just being raised by my mom and dad, mm -hmm. everything that has come, you know, from what I do, you know, my dad, you know, worked from the day he was knee high to a grasshopper, right. you know what I'm saying? He worked the fields, then, then walked to school, you know, mm -hmm. you know, he came back when it was segregation, he had to walk past three, four white schools right. just to get to the one black one that they had. So, you know, that, that grind came from, from my father. I've held a job since the time I was 12, you know, I was right. scrubbing and buffing floors at 12 years old. I'd get off. I'd get off uh, school in junior high and go and clean offices. My dad picked me up after he got done and, you know, bring me home. So that grind was, was always there. It's just at that point in time, football had came so easy to me. Right. I didn't have to sit there and study. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to learn. Right. The defenses came to me. It wasn't, it was Dick LeBeau's defense, bro. You right. know how that is. So, but at that time, it wasn't Dick LeBeau. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was, you know, Tim Lewis. But right. it was still the still same, same, same defense. The right. same defense. And, you know, I said, I'm going to give it everything I got. I'm going to make sure that, you know, if it don't happen, it's not going to be because of me. Mm -hmm. And then I'll know for sure it just wasn't meant to be. One foot. Right. right. For sure. So, like I said, a week before training camp, Clark Higgins breaks his hand. Yep. And they're like, we want you to come back, bring you in for training camp. Da -da -da. So, I'm already set in my head. I'm not going to make the Steelers roster. Mm -hmm. I already know that. They don't want to keep me. I... I but I got 31 other teams out right. there that can see the film. 
and I'm like the one team that I got to play against, which was Baltimore in the regular season, picked me up. Picked you up, right. I said, so. So you know what happened like that. Right. So I'm like, you know what? When I get there, I took all my comforts away. I got rid of my spring on my bed. I laid my bed on the floor. Got rid of my TV. That's so you, though. Dude, no, everything. That's so, you, so bro. I was sleeping on the floor on a mattress, bro. No TV, no nothing. Room, you know, I had a roommate at the right. time. He's like, hey, what's the, what the, I'm like, we ain't doing no TV, bro. I don't need no distractions, none of that. So. What if he had slapped you, though, and said we get the We'd have just had to fight. <laughs> so I, um, I get in that year and. Man, I learned both outsides, I done learned both insides, right. so I could play all four linebacker positions. I'm doing pretty decent on special teams, and like I said, I done, I done learned everything. So I'm not sitting there, when they start shifting in motion with my mm -hmm. head spinning, and somebody go down, it's like, hey, who could? Yeah, I could do it. Yeah. I could do it. Whatever position. Right, so during, you know, uh, preseason, I would play outside a couple quarters, go to inside a quarter, whatever it was that they needed to fill. That's so I got to, right. So I got to get more film, get more playing time. Because in my mind, I'm like, I'm not gonna make it here. Right. And at that point in time, they had brought in, um, can't think of the guy's name, but they had brought in from Cincinnati. And, um, oh. Yeah, no, because y'all already had Clark. Peasy was there. It was one of Peasy's so homeboys. Uh, and basically, you know, they're telling yeah. you, you good, you in. And they came down to him and I, and they ended up releasing him mm -hmm. and keeping me. And then it just, you know, it just flowed. From was there. that the was that the same year you jumped over the Damien after the interception, or was that because you were a special teams guy, right? When you first made it. So 2004. That wasn't the year. That was 2005. I got you. Right. So cause that that was the first time. Because obviously when we watched y'all, that was the year uh, you guys were like. Y'all were top five defense all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all yeah. were great that year. Number one defense. We were number two. And I remember watching the game, and you'd always see with Joy Porter, Peasley, make a sack, or Clark oh, yeah. running around. And for some reason, I don't know if somebody was hurt or what it was. Clark got hurt. You were in the game. And I remember you caught yeah. the ball, and I was like, man, who is this little juggernaut, this little spark plug <laughs> that, did, that did jumped over, that jumped over LT. But then, remember, so I came the next year. Right. Wait, no, two years two later. Years so I came two years later. That. After the Super Bowl, and when I got there, it was Clark and Peasy, right? That was, I think they started, because right. I was with them for one year. And I remember, man, we, we throw this big party, not big party, we cook at Potsy House, right. James Ferry. We're cooking at Potsy House, nobody talks to me, right, the entire time. <laughs> like, I'm just trying, I'm, you know, I'm social. I'm trying to start conversations with people, nobody talks to me, because Steve Hope was gone. Okay. Oh yeah. Right. It was feeling some kind of way. Everybody was feeling. They yeah. Like, oh, man. like you ain't see hope. Whatever. Right. Yeah. And yeah. so we playing Cincinnati. It's got to be like week two, week three. I can't even remember. And you remember they run like a skinny or a slant. I jump up, smash the dude. It pops out. Ike picks it. So I'm running to the sideline, fired up. And I think this was like the first time you ever really talked to me. And you walk up, <laughs> but now you run up to me, you go, you a stealer now. And I remember, like, I'm going to remember that moment forever because up until that point, I felt like an outcast. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, like, I remember, I remember making that hit and you running up to me and telling me I was a stealer now. And I, I was like, oh, shoot, I finally made it. But we go into the next year, bro, and, you know, Joey leaves, mm -hmm. you know, you move in to the starting position. Were you ready for that? Like, like had you been chomping at the bit? waiting for that or when you got it were you kind of nervous like okay I gotta be the man no to, to be honest with you I was chomping at the bit because from you know 2005 2004 5 and 6 I was getting a lot of spot starts because mm -hmm. you'd have you know I think Clark was down for three or four games I think one year Joy was down for I think he got popped in one year mm -hmm. uh might have, no that wasn't the year he got shot but he was down for a couple games uh one year and then Clark you know from back and forth I could play either side so right. I was getting you know maybe four to six games of starting a year and now I'm like it's about that time I don't you know I feel like I could I could do this I don't you know at what point in time you know I'm, it may not be here but it, somewhere else right. and then when they let Joy go I was like okay I got it mm -hmm. but at that same point in time when they let Joy go the first thing they did was they drafted one and two yeah I outside that. linebackers I remember that. Yep. and that right there oh that just set a flame on me and that's that's really the thing that's the chip that's been sitting on my shoulder mm -hmm. from that point forward is anybody you bringing in here you bringing in here to try and replace me and the thing was is like 
if you really for me, you don't go one and two. Right. You don't go one and two. No, so, you're not, you're not going to waste them picks, though. Right. Yep. So it was never, oh, he going to be able to step in and do it. It was, this is who we want to step in and do, but it came down to, they ended up moving, I believe it was Timmons to the inside. Because mm -hmm. that, that year we won the Super Bowl, Timmons was the dime. He come in for uh, foot. For foot. Yep. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So that right there yep. just added a whole nother chip onto my shoulder, you know, along with the fact of previous things, a self, you know, self-destructing things. Right, of course, right. that was my own doing that. It was just like, you know what? Ain't no, right. Ain't nobody going to do this for me but me. And from that point forward, man, it was just, I didn't care if you had picked up a free agent undrafted. I'm like, <laughs> y'all getting him to try and replace me. Right. Like, hey, sorry as hell. Whatever right. it was right, to, right. to keep that that right. chip on my shoulder, it didn't matter, you know. And through the course of time, I think they might have drafted four or five dudes. Yeah, we 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 felt. I felt like we got a linebacker every year. Oh yeah. At some point, at some point in the draft, but you know, you you get the starting spot, right? Obviously, that that year, I think we went eight and eight, so so we weren't as good. We get we get Mike T the next year. I think that year you went to the Pro Bowl. Nope. So we get Mike T my first year. Was it the first? Year? Yeah, my first year yeah, started right, right, because that's when they went Timmons first and nah, Woodley second. You're absolutely right. Peasy was gone. He let Peasy go. Peasy was gone, and so so that yeah. so that year, what you had over eight sacks that year. So that year, yeah, something like you went to the Pro Bowl. Yeah, went to the Pro Bowl that year. So we come in and remember we were hot with Mike T because Mike T ran us into the ran ground. us into the I dirt. I actually spent had to fight MJD a couple of weekends ago because he was talking about yeah. You're Y'all back to back. Bro, we was dead. This man that ran us into the dirt <laughs> exactly. from being in the training camp. Exactly. I was telling you. I'm like, bro. I told even on our meeting, he was like, uh same thing. You know, I said, I said, you ran us into the dirt. Like, well, I had to see if you was gonna fight for. I'm like, we go fight for you. I said, but came playoff time, we ain't had nothing left. You, I had no organs at that time. Like, like I was in the hospital. We ain't, we ain't had nothing left come play all time. It was it was Right, so I remember, bro, I remember we get to camp, we get to camp the next year, and I was like, this is different. You know what I'm saying? Like, he, he had changed a little bit, but mm -hmm. we were different. You know what I'm saying? I almost felt like the way the year ended before and us not feeling like we didn't have no gas, Coach LeBeau understand, you know, like, shoot, Fred Taylor, MJD went crazy at Hinesville. No question. You know what I'm saying? And, and so we start that year, bro, and it's just different. Right away, I remember we played Houston, we killed them, and just defensively, we were on a different level, but you're the defensive player of the year that year. Like I, were, I can vividly remember, bro, like getting late in games and being like, "All right, people gonna get one," you know what I'm saying, or being like, "Troy gonna get one." Like that was the yeah, team. That, hey, you know I'm what I'm like, saying? Do some Troy stuff. Though. I'm like, "Yo, Troy about to get something. Right. He gotta get something." I'm like, "If he don't get something, I gotta get there." Exactly. <laughs> and then, like that was that was the team we were. And yeah. I remember. I remember. So that was the year Tom Brady was out. Right. We go to. Uh, New we England. go to New England, yeah. right? We, we we smashed them, but that's when we just started laying bodies down every oh, week. You oh, know yeah. what I'm saying? It was me, you, oh, and I remember you hit uh, was massive Park, oh, yeah. right? From Cleveland, I remember you hit him, bro, and I was doing pirouettes, spinning. You got me fine. I no, you no. was doing an Indian rain dance, bro. That's because we brought the rain, coach. I was fired up about it, but like I remember that, and so we go through that whole season. We knew. Like we knew, like at that point, we was like, all right, there's no, there's no defense better than us. We're gonna cover the East oh, yeah, back. No so, like we knew that, and then, and it's the play, bro. I, I tell people all the time, it's the greatest. It's the to me, it's the greatest team football play in the history of the Super Bowl. No question. But it's the greatest defensive play. And people still have this argument with me when I was like, nah, he was supposed to blitz, y'all. Yeah. Like he was supposed to go. I want you to just run me through that. I heard you run it through. Yeah, I right, run uh, it. I, or, or, or I, 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 I remember. Highlight. I remember. I remember it as if you know it was yesterday. Uh, that whole like first half, bro. We getting there a step late. Willie getting there a step late. I'm getting there a step late. Your hands just on his back as he's releasing it. And uh, coach calls all out blitz, and I'm like, I know Timmons is coming in on my right side. I got to get this tackle to step at me. I said I'm a I'm a play for the quick slant in. I'm like that's the closest thing to me. I said, they got to go for the end zone. They ain't got no more timeouts exactly. left. They had just used their last timeout. I said, so they can't run it. It got to be a pass. I said, I'm going to play for the quick slant. I'm going to step at this tackle to get him to step at me. That way, it'll get Timmons through, and he, he, he can't be able to hold the ball. So yep. he got to release it. So I go. I do the step. I come back out. I'm playing for the 
for the slant, I'm looking dead at him like, you looking at me, I think he's looking at me. He so. can't even see me. Right. And I'm looking like he's not about to throw the ball. His eyes was here. I'm looking, it's, it's <laughs> like I'm looking dead at him, bro. Right. Like, we locked eyes. I'm thinking we done locked eyes. Right. And I'm like, he's not about to throw the ball. And I see his arm go, I'm like, oh, shit, he's about to throw the ball. And it surprised me. That's why I catch the ball like this. I'm like, he really just threw the ball. So once I caught it, the first thing I'm thinking is, like, house. Right. Like, and then I look up, and I feel like I'm fighting with Shay for, like, 30 seconds. <laughs> he was trying to take I'm like, Shay, man, get the hell away from me. Go block somebody. Right. And by the time I looked up, man, it was just it was just a sea of red. And the crazy thing is, I, you remember, that whole week in practice, any time we got a pick, it was take it to the house. Coach Yo. said, Dick Bowl was like, hey, Man, put the, video the percentages up. of Yo. what happens in the Super Bowl, if you score a touchdown, your chances of winning are something goofy, like 80, almost 90 something percent. Right. So every time we got a pick in practice, we'd run all the way to the end zone. Yep. If we was at the 10, we'd run all oh, the way yeah. to the other side. Transition. Score, yes, score, Yo. get a block, do that. And dude, like, that was just practice making perfect. Everybody went in, dude. It's. Once I came through the little cluster of the quarterback with Deshae and right. Ike and all them, it just like opened up and I see Kiesel crack back. I see Wood hit going down the side and the lineman dives at me and you just you just dive at him. You could have helped me actually if you no, hit but, Preston. But think about this though. No, it wasn't. Me diving at him, that made Larry Bubble, bubble, a little hey, bit bubble a little bit. And I only do you know, I had ran all that way, dog. You I got a block. <laughs> I got a block early on. You gotta hit somebody. Yeah, I picked somebody <laughs> off early. I said, I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna keep going. Dog, I was like, hell no. He ain't stopping us. I ain't even see nobody else, though, dog. You ain't see. I thought right. he was the last Bro, dude. Listen, Larry. <laughs> I didn't know Larry was there. Right. And the thing is, he went to slap at the ball. Yep. He missed the ball and he hit my chest. And, and he hit you. It gave me time to cover the ball. Yep. So when we fell, his hand was actually on top of the ball here, but I had already covered up. So when we rolled out, like if he had hit that ball, if he had better aim. Bro, I'd have been sick, dog. Oh. I'd have been, so. I might have killed myself. Right, so the picture, right? The picture is you laying on the ground, my shoulder pad off, right? Cause I just dove on the ground and I'm nervous, right? I'm like, yeah, dog. So I'm thinking we gonna celebrate, get fired up. And he was like, ah. I said, wait. You hurt? My he neck. Like, she's like, my neck. I say, you hurt? He said, neck. He's like, nah, I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so when you said that, I was like, man, I ain't worried about bruh, him. Duh. I hit my neck so hard, bro. It took, it took my chiropractor almost nine, no, it was 14 months to get my neck to pop out. Bro. Bro. That's crazy. Bro. And then by the time, like I said, I was tired as hell. Like, no question about it. But the congratulations, trying to walk back over, was the worst. I'm like, bah, 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 just trying to lay on you. I'm like, bro, I can't breathe. I got to get some air. I, like, this shit is not going good. No, and so that's obviously the thing of legend to us. Oh, no question. What's, what's become the thing of legend for everybody else, though, is, is your workouts. Whether it's pushing plates on your birthday, uh, different things you post. You know, you started out, you know, you would have on a sweatsuit. You know, I saw you the other day, you doing step ups and yeah, you, got yeah. your, you got your VMO out. Uh, I, I guess you're just trying to show off, but you know, we're gonna take a little break. And after we take this break, I got a special somebody that's gonna come out who may have trained one or two people sitting here. And we're gonna find <laughs> out who the toughest. Man, that, that year, uh, we definitely put it put together, put it all together, man. It was crazy, bro. Yeah, D, uh, James Harrison, man. You know, like there are periods of time where I think players are the best ever. Like, like to like in our 2010, um, I don't think I don't think anybody in the history of football was better than Aaron Rodgers in that period of time. Correct. Like, hey, correct. I know. Yeah, you know, yeah I know. Unfortunately, man. Yeah, I know. But just like his touch, everything was the most perfect. Uh, everything. Right. He was, um, he was in a different zone, even me, amongst the best. That year, actually, you could say the same thing for James Harrison as well, man, because, like, 
some of the things that I saw him do, taking on four blockers at, at a time crazy, and still bro. trying to, and also, you know, legit, legitimately being held, you know, like they had, the, the game yeah. had to evolve because they were, you know, hooking the way they were blocking. Well, I told y'all we had a special guest. Now, this guest is extremely important to me. I don't play 13 years. I don't even get close to it if I don't have him in my life, right? So it's Ian Danny, the owner, founder, creator, the guru behind performance enhancement professionals in Scottsdale, Arizona. This was my trainer. My trainer, PT, ART, therapist, uh, psychologist, pretty much, pretty much everything. But I introduced James Debo, who has now changed his shirt, right? Because he wanted to show off what Ian does for him and say, okay, even in retirement, this is what this dude can make you look like. I introduced Debo to Ian. Right? And at that time, I felt like I was Ian's favorite. He was at my house every Monday, you know what I mean? We watched Sons of Anarchy together after the Monday night football games. We did treatment. You he come over, you come over one time, lie. one time, and this is not a lie. Ian, if, I'm, if I lie, you, you can slap me, not on TV though, right? <laughs> you came over one time, the next trip, bro, the next trip, he had to go to your house first, then come to my house. <laughs> no. Because in first the the next the next week the next week you was like oh I'm gonna go see James first and then I'm a, in my line. Did you get treatment or not? Yeah, but that wasn't that wasn't how it went. The way it went was how it, it went that you was the only person getting treated. So he was trying to make sure he spent more time with you, so he saw me first. No, that's not that's <laughs> not what happened, Evo. And you came to my house the first time. Right, and so then you was like, oh, I'm not gonna drive to Ryan's house. I'm too good to drive to Ryan's house. And then Ian, being the guy that he was, he's like, oh, this guy's, you know, defensive player of the year. He's super <laughs> swole. It's gonna be really easy to make him look real big. Then I got skinny Ryan here, who comes from Louisiana, eats jambalaya and crap. That's gonna be very difficult. So Ian, tell me why you betrayed me for this man. You stop bringing the king cake to the house. <laughs> 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 but for real, bro, so, so what was it like, though, man? Like, what's it like, one, in, in doing your job, but then getting somebody like James to come train here, who we see all the, the different things and different techniques you employ in the weight room, but none of that junk's easy. Like, I did that junk. None of it's easy. Does it excite you when you have a dude like this who's basically going to run through whatever wall you tell him to? Yeah, for sure. Makes it a whole lot easier. And you, when you get guys like that, half the battle is stopping them, make sure they don't do too much which I probably didn't do as good a job as I should have done with this guy. I guess he, <laughs> yeah, look he at him now. Always racing through, but yeah. So, but like being being a part of a part of his career, you know, he has the, he has the back surgery. Uh, he goes through these different things, and I remember you coming down working on him. Obviously, him coming out here during the summers to to have the type of career, the longevity that he has. Did did it surprise you that he could hold up and work the way? Stop it. What a lot of people don't know. I did all my therapy here with him. I did none of my therapy with the NFL. They locked us out. All my therapy. There was that with year? There was, well, he's a he's a freaking genius. Yeah. You should have did that. Like I, you, I would have made that decision either way. After he has that surgery and he's working like that though, and did you see his career extending the way that it did? Uh, I thought there were a lot of things that could be put in place, a lot of pieces that were missing mm -hmm. that we put into the puzzle that we had a good chance, and just the fact that he was willing to do the work. And I'm yeah. just big on you, you got to get the basics all the time, but the basics takes a lot of work because it's not just while you're training, it's while you're away, it's making sure you're doing your nutrition and your sleep and your right. supplements, your mobility, all that type of stuff. Been there. And, and he was willing to do all that. Right. So I figured, of course, we've got a chance if you're willing to do that. It's hard when guys don't really want to make that kind of commitment and they think you can just come in and fix them. That's when it gets tricky. So I have a question. Why did you allow Debo to replace me <laughs> as your favorite client? Hey, I never allowed him. I think he didn't replace you with my I think he, I, you don't really stutter like that, Ian. <laughs> you don't really stutter like that, man. Come I, on, man, we know his favorite. Stop it. Who's his favorite? Timmy. Oh, oh I forgot all about that. <laughs> you were right. You got, he's from Canada. He's wearing, this yes. man then, then bobsledded, then sprinted, no Olympic question. lifted, all these things for his country. And his favorite person is from Florida. Yeah, Come on, right, right? It's. Is it, is, it, is it not true? So where, okay. That's where the rank is. We're, we're going to do the rankings. There ain't no ranking. We're doing the rank. Number one, Tim Tebow. No, that's the guy 
guys. Are right there. Yes. No, you're putting me on the spot, no. Yes. That's why I didn't tell you what we were going to talk about before we <laughs> yeah, came out here. Yes, no question. No. no question about it. I got a lot of favorites. You guys are one of them. No, and <laughs> no. Hey, no, no He's trying, he trying to play me like I'm a prostitute. <laughs> you know, I got this one of the fly. <laughs> that is, I have, I have 14 kids. I love them all. I love them all the same. I love them all the same. <laughs> I love, I love all the same. <laughs> First off, I've been around you, around people you train who you don't necessarily love as much as you love us. Right? And because you are, like, people are going to sit, we're going to do a podcast together in the future. People are going to sit here and they're going to be like, man. That guy and Danny, who Ryan brought on, who has all those accolades, who's a great trainer, he has such a calm, cool demeanor. Yeah. He's, he's a, the, the type of guy who we know is so intelligent that he doesn't need to use curse words in order to get his point yes. across, yeah. right? This is a man that would never, ever, ever say anything crass, because he's Blanadian, right? He's a <laughs> right. black Canadian, right? The right? okay. only thing that should probably be nicer than a Canadian is a black one. No question. Right? And so, and so, Ian, do, would you like to explain your coaching philosophy in the way that you push your players, your clients, to be the best? Is it, is it just constant positive energy? Right? <laughs> is, it, is it constant, constant positive, positive reinforcement? reinforcement? Yeah. Is, 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 that, is that why Debo can barely fit in this quadruple <laughs> X uh, <laughs> cutoff shirt? Is, well, is, like he said, he didn't do a good job of trying to stop me. Oh, Slow okay. Down. I got so, you. I got you. You know, I'm like. So that's hey, the only mistake he's ever made is I allowing did. you to get oh, too no, small. That's the only thing that he did right. Oh. So he stopped <laughs> me then. See what you he stopped you. <laughs> he stopped. He stopped. He stopped you dead. And you're he allowed me to stay healthy. Hell yeah. yeah. He stopped you all. <laughs> but for real though, bro, like when you when you are when you do this job and you do work with the elite level athletes, the the the, the Tim Tebow's, the the James Harrison, obviously. You know, you got an opportunity. I got to work here for shoot, eight, nine years. And I think like the, the huge thing that happens, especially now being retired is, is you, you gravitate toward personalities, toward people who have the same drive as you and people who, who are willing to do what it takes. In this job, having to do like him, having to do like Tim, is there more enjoyment though in training people who are willing to do all those things you said he was in order to have that prolonged career. Absolutely, 100%. Because for me, it's not really about, um, you know, this guy's a number one pick or he's this or that. I mean, I've had the- Should I, We both undrafted, undrafted bro. Exactly. Yeah. I've, yeah. I've had the most success and the most fun with the guys that just were on full-time grind and came, they're undrafted free agents and knew they had to work. Mm -hmm. And they were just really into just doing what it was. What I found is all the best guys they actually want the least amount of information. They just want to know, okay, this is what I got to do, this yeah. is how I could do it. The guys that are going to be like so-so, they're the ones that ask you all the questions. Right. Well, should I do this? Why am I doing this? How can I get this? Blah, 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 blah. Right. And the guys that always turn out to be great, they're just like, okay, let's yeah. go. And they're, just, they're dialed in right from the beginning. Mm -hmm. You know, once you get their buy-in and their trust, they just follow and the, it makes it a lot easier to work with them. Bro, so, so the, first year, the first year I came here was the year uh, before I got sick. So that was the first year. So the year after was going into the Super Bowl year. And I remember, bro, driving from Virginia to Pittsburgh. Because we had, we had just bought a house in Pittsburgh. We were moving. And I wanted a hamburger so bad. <laughs> like, like Debo, like just, oh, I was like, I would eat, I would eat, I would have ate a hamburger probably. For, like if somebody was having a grill, a uh, cookout in their backyard, and I smelled it, I probably would have stopped. Right? So I remember we're pulling over, like a, a place made a point, Virginia, Pittsburgh, bro. And you know, at that time, man, I'm eating freaking Sunfair or whatever chef he got. Like one year, it was a chef, man, he would just bring, it was like just eggs and proteins and vegetables. Mm -hmm. And I would sit there, I had to wake up an hour early to sit there and eat it up. I get this hamburger, bro, I'm fired up, <laughs> right? I'm fired up. And Yonk's fired up for me too, because they all, we, anytime we go out to eat, I'm like, nah, I'm gonna eat this first and then oh, we can go, what right? Pull, I pull a hamburger out, yeah. bro, she's fired up. I take a bite, I start to chew, man, it was, it was almost orgasmic, bro. <laughs> and like the third chew, I see his freaking face and I spit it back in the bag. <laughs> Dang, like that. Right? That was the life that you make people, and you know why, bro? Because I knew I was gonna have to come back on a Monday or be in here and push that sled. It was gonna be 120 degrees and that you were gonna have no sympathy. 
right? And that you were gonna say things to me that if I didn't love you so much, if I didn't see you as such a mentor, that I'd fist fight you for. Right. Right, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like he, like he say things to you. Right. And you know, he look at you like that point, you're like, nah, man, like I've been in the league seven years. Like I'm actually pretty good at this. Like I know I work hard, but he's talking to you like you're not willing to do what it takes, what it takes to, to be great. And I think like that's the thing I loved about you the most. But if you look at your career and where it started, right, the, the, the things in the sports you were involved in, and now it being so much football, right? And I'm gonna be honest about this. I see so many people come to you when they feel like it's getting to the end. Mm -hmm. And it could be a, a second year dude, mm -hmm. a third year dude, right? Maybe somebody you even knew before that and they like, shoot, I'm at the bottom, this might be over. I probably need to go see Ian Danny, the guy people have been telling me right. about, right? Is, is that something you take and you like, you know what? It's a badge of honor. Like they know that I can do that. Or are you sometimes pissed off like, well, hell, if you came to me in the first place, we wouldn't be in this position. Right, right. It's kind of a little of both. You know, sometimes I just feel like, well, you can see me now or see me later. We're, we're going right. to sort of find out. But it, the opportunity to help someone and have them have a huge impact on their career and extend it and make lots of money and take care of their family and stay healthy for longer and do all those things, you, you kind of lose some of that when you don't see it until the very end. Right. But, I mean, the flip side of it is at least they kind of feel like, this is the place and this, you know, when, when shit hits the fan, this is where you have to go and you can get put back right. You know? Absolutely. So this is, this is my last question for you is this. I think it's great that Debo did all those things while he was playing. I think that's awesome, right? It made, it made us a better team. We won a lot of games. I felt very safe in my position at the free safety. We're both retired now. I've been retired a little bit longer than him. I wear long sleeves every day, right? Uh, I don't wear shorts. You know, and I like the Peloton, right? Okay. They're, they're nice people on the Peloton. Right. You know what I mean? And you know, every now and then like I stretch or I work out with some of the people at work. Um, why in the hell are you still training? No, you're actually training him harder now than he was when he was playing. Cause obviously he could just pop his bicep and it'll be okay. No, 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 no. Sir. What are y'all doing? Like- I don't have to run as much. Do you run at all? For what, Ian? Why, why would you- want me to run. Why would you even still train? Like, you should let him just come in here and work out. But I see the videos, right? Actually, you know what's crazy? How about this? Even when I was still playing, he used to throw me with like the Ian underlings. <laughs> right? I work, you know with, I work with other people too. No, you don't. Yes, Every I time have. I see a video and you pulling up the bench, here go in right here. No, come on, no, Debo. Come on, no. You're Stop my this. favorite. <laughs> it's like you and Tim, 1A, 1B. Hey, you, you can pull up you can pull up videos now and he's not in them. So tell me no question. That's that's not true. That's a but 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 so so you do you jump into the workouts with him in cause you swole too. Guys, he's over 50. I just want y'all to know that. And if you go, if you, listen, if you go to the PEP social media page, when he turned 50, he got naked for all y'all. I'm telling you, oh, yeah. cut up like a turkey. Yeah, got yeah him, got man, him. hey, that boy was shredded. But so like, when y'all when are doing these workouts now, are you working out, do you ever just think to yourself, this is really stupid? We have, we have, we have, we're doing things too though. So you forgot, I got a workout app. So a lot of these workouts are going on to my app. Oh. It's Devo's. Oh, I know, I know. People put your sweatshirt on. They do. I don't. Yeah, I, I don't have the app. app. It's called, yeah, it's, it's Clearly, called. I don't have the app. You can see. I, I mean, I know that. I wouldn't. I wouldn't give it to you because it would be like, you know, a bit waste. I'm a waste. I ain't going to say it was a waste. That. So, it, so it would be like coming to my house on Monday night and staying at my house the entire time and not going to see you first. You gotta a understand waste. something. Like he was. It's a stop on the way to you from the airport. No, sir. That was not it. And it was also 45 minutes from my house. But you want me to drive to your house? Or you could just see him another day. Why would I see him another day when I got to do legs that day and he needs to like, get the needles? Ryan, listen to this, man. I was actually seeing him someday Sunday night as soon as we got home. Wow, you never told me you were in town on Sundays, bro. Bro, if I was in town, you knew. Wow. <laughs> After you was gone. Yeah. Okay, 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 that's good. Whew. Because I was that, going next Monday to DC. That was gonna be heartbreaking. Wow. That was gonna be, no, just cause I'm the only reason you know him. 
Okay. You Thank thought, you. like, you thought, like, Thank all these you. other people were so great, right? You were strained up. What I say, man? Look, my guy's the best said, in the world. Yeah, He's I the said, best. I, Just come over. I said, I'm gonna try it out. I got First you. time, bro. I ain't even making pay. Really? That's the type of friendship, right. and he took you. Took you just like. And that. think about this now. Years I into. Took him. I'm talking. Remember you said you let me be tough on the show. <laughs> Years into retirement, bro, you are still training him. Why? And how much freaking fun must it be, though? Well, he still wants to be swole. <laughs> <laughs> now he doesn't have to go banging his head 16 times a year. No question. Recover a lot easier. He can just push it to the limit, see what he wants to do. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I sometimes I don't know why he's doing now. it either. But. Well, guys, I'm going to tell you this. <laughs> We're going to come back and we're going to circle back around to this podcast next year. I'd love to do a part two. You're going to see in Danny shortly after this. We're going to do something for this season so he could teach you and tell you guys about how he helps prepare dudes, not only for the 16 weeks of the season, right, but to be healthy throughout their careers. I'm going to be swole next year when we come back. I'm not going to. I'm going to be swole. Just swole. 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 Just say swoller. Swoller. I'm going to be swoller. <laughs> than what you are now. I'm going to be bigger. I'm going to be swoller to end next year. I like it. Right? But not as swole as Debo. And if oh, I am, I'm a slacker. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate you coming on, man. <laughs> giving us the time. Please, Lord. Please, Lord. Please, Lord. Please, Lord. We got one more segment, man. Then we finish up. Long time. <laughs> Family, in order to a family to run together, man, everybody needs to be the best of themselves. And I think that's the beauty of what we had is like, Ike was the best at what he did. You were the best at what you did. I was the best at what I did. Coach Bo was the best for all of us. Right. For James, for, you know, for James Ferry, or for Larry, for Timmons, you know, for Casey Hampton. Um, it is, a, it, it is a blessing. I almost say sometimes I wish that, that, that three to me is a dynasty. And that's the, that's, that's ah, the unfortunate thing is that we can never call ourselves a dynasty mm -hmm. um, uh, because of that. Because I, I do think that that defense needs to be recognized as a dynasty because it is the perfect example of team defense. You know, well, that segment was fun. We got to talk about um, the way I approach friendship and the way you approach friendship. Okay. And I obviously approach it in a better fashion or way than you do. Um, According to you. And you've clearly approached working out in a better fashion or way than I have, even in no, retirement. That's the truest thing you said that's, this whole thing. Yeah, it's very true. Yeah. But you know what I'm saying? My nephews, man, you know, James, Henry, like it, it, it was a, the participation trophy thing mm -hmm. with you was a big deal, yes. right? Uh, your boys are growing, uh, beautiful beautiful boys but obviously they're gonna want they like daddy play sports all they uncles play sports okay. right they're gonna want to play football they're gonna want to do those things how are you balancing that in your parenting so the big thing with the football is I need grades so my big thing is this football thing can only take you so far you can go in there I tell them all the time you can blow out your knee you can tear something up you can never be able to play this game again but your mind will last you forever. You can do whatever you want. And I tell them, like, dude, some of the richest people in the world don't play sports, do they? You have mind to do it. Most of like, the richest right. people in right. the world don't Most play sports. Most of the richest people in the world don't play sports, never play sports at any point, right. they use their mind to do it. Right. So that's one of the things that I try and preach to them. So something else is they have to get a certain grade level if they want to be able to play contact sports. So mm -hmm. I made it to where it was something ridiculous at first, like you gotta get straight A's if you wanna play contact sports. Right. But it was really until I got done playing so that I was able to be there and watch oh, the makes sense. and talk. So did they play flag and stuff before? They played flag before. Okay. Yeah. So I wanted to be there and be able, you know, to see how they're being taught and make sure it wasn't the way we learned. Mm -hmm. You know, how you got a coach there that's right that has no true understanding just y'all the, 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 the Oklahoma drill y'all just run drill every day. go head first into one another boom. yeah boom bull in the ring right one, two three four you getting hit in your back everything else like what's the point of that you, right it's no point in time that you're not going to know where the ball is coming from because you sit there and you watch it the whole time exactly so and I wanted to make sure they were being taught correctly and once they got to that point then it was okay I need a certain reasonable 
grade level mm -hmm. or grades so that you right. could, you know, go out there and, and play the game. And to be honest with you, my son, you know, he 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 muddled the line, you know, this year, James, and right. he came through at the end of the year and got his grades where he needed to right. be so that he was, you know, that he was able to play. So when you go when you go to these games, D Bo, and when you're quiet. We, that's what I was gonna ask. Quiet. You like me. Quiet as a church mouse, I sit back, I don't say nothing, I don't get to it. It's a few times, you know, they'll lay a hit on somebody and they, you know, they'll get a reaction out of me. Right. But I don't want to be there and the cameras be on and they just mm -hmm. waiting to see how I'm going to And you know what, too, what happens is if, if we talk a lot, our kids start doing this, right? Every time something mm -hmm. happens because they look to see. Because one thing they know is this Coach, you might be all right. Bobby Daddy, you okay. But you ain't my dad, no right? You, you, you haven't done what he's done. You're also not going to hold me to the standard that my dad holds me to. Like, my thing was, and, and obviously still is with Jordan, it's like, I can take it and beat, like, all those things. Mm -hmm. Don't be soft. No question. You know what I'm saying? Like, like no that's, question. just don't be soft. All the other stuff, missing tackles, if I know you tried to fire on him and you missed him, right. that's football. Right, see, I don't, and, and I ain't going to lie, I, don't, I haven't told him not to like lighten up so Henry plays but they play in a weight limit but right the weight limit is almost 200 pounds he 100 he 90 is soaking wet <laughs> right 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 and you know I'm like hey you gotta go in there put your face in the fan and right and, and just that's what we do gotta do that's what we do and man he ran in there one time put his face in the fan and it got crumbled he made the tackle but I'm like Ugh. <laughs> I'm like, he all right, I got to go home and put the microcurrent on him or something. Right, you know right, saying? right. So, but you know what? And in those moments, though, you got to go have a conversation with him. Like, I know for you, that didn't work out like you wanted oh, it no to. no question. But what you did is what I expect. Like, no what question. you did, like, I'm, I'm always going to be okay with that. That's what I told Joe. So when Jordan was, was coming up, we had a, his sophomore year, his first year starting in high school, very good high school. He missed, like, two or three tackles in the Jamboree. All okay. right. But one of them just looks so soft to me. So I told him, on Tuesday mornings, we're gonna do tackling drills. I put my Super Bowl helmet on. You know, that's like the no old question. shut. No grace. Right? My shoulder pads. I put on his high school practice jersey because I wanted him to look at me like a high school. And I was like, we just talked for him and we talked about it. I said, this is not about me trying to run you over. No I said, it's me trying to tell you that if you do this right, it doesn't matter what they do. You know what I mean? And so like that's, and that was the thing I wanted to get across in parenting him, that this isn't about football. This is about learning stuff about life. So as your boys grow, Debo, what are the things that you are using football or using sports or just things that you do as a parent, as a dad, that you felt like were valuable to you? Because your kids is not going to get what you got. They won't be the youngest of 14, right? They won't grow, they're gonna grow up in a house with a father who's accomplished all that you have, made the money that you have. So some of the things you learn, whether it was buffing floors or having jobs from being young, they don't have. So in parenting, how are you getting those things, those messages, those lessons across? My, my, my message to my kids, I don't, I don't try and relate anything to football because I don't want them thinking that everything is related. Right. Like everything relates to football and football is the only thing. No, it's not. I want my kids to be better than me. Mm -hmm. I want my kids to be better. I want them to be better human beings. I want them to be, at, whenever that time comes, better fathers. I want them to be more compassionate, more caring, more loving, more mm -hmm. understanding. I want them just to be better people than me. And when you're a better person and you have that love and care for other people, then that's just going to come out in everything you do. Right. So the biggest thing is for them is I want my boys to know that I love you, I care about you more than anything in this world. Mm -hmm. And I want you to be better than me in every aspect of it. Whether it's loving, the compassion, empathy, sympathy, right. whatever that may be. Some things that we don't always have. Yes. Yeah, like that's and I think that's like that's that's something for me that's gonna be important to people hear about you, because I know that. Right? I've known that. You know, I've watched you with your boys, but I think sometimes people see us outside of, of, of that capacity, right? Outside of being the father and the way that we have to live and adjust to life in order to be successful outside the house. They don't think we have those things or we want to teach those well, see, things. See, you got to understand a lot of those people are seeing us in just our work atmosphere. Yeah. They see James here to come out the tunnel, frown us, looking at us, ready to tear up shit. Right. That's not who I am. That's, I can't go out there like Heinz Ward 
put on a smile right. and then smack you in your mouth and then break your It'd jaw. It'd be cheesy, right? It'd be, <laughs> be cheesy. You know what I'm saying? Right. I, I, I can't do that. Right. So my demeanor and my, my persona going into that is totally different. I want you to know I'm going to come out here. I'm trying to rip your head off. Right. And I'm trying to inflict as much pain every as time, I can every single time. onto you without actually truly injuring you. Right. Because I want you to come back for the next week. And I just don't more. want you to finish this game. <laughs> right, right. And so, and so like, we, we've talked about the workouts. We, we've talked about your approach to things. I'm going to be honest, bro. Like, I know, I always knew you had a great personality. But the times where, where we get treatment, the times where we on the plane or the bus in the hotels, like, that ain't for everybody to see. Right. You know? And I remember, like, you would do interviews and you would go back into work mode. And so I, I'm sitting back. I'm like, I'm at a restaurant bar or something. I was like, is that Debo on TV? And so, bro, and so like, I see you on TV. You're doing commercials. You, you're, you're going to be in a new show. And you know, we text and talk every now and then. And you send me like, hey man, I just want to show you these workouts that I, that I got for this new show. And I'm like, and I'm expecting this, right? right I'm right. expecting this. <laughs> And then I look and you like bouncing off of ropes and you flipping and you jumping on top. You throwing people out of rings. You got a new show coming out. I just saw, I just saw like one of the trailers for it. Let the people know what that is and who Debo, James Harrison might get to be. And okay. so it is. Okay. So the new show coming out is called Hills. It's on Stars. It'll uh, premiere August 15th. And I play a character called uh, Apocalypse. So he's a big nerd done that wrestler. <laughs> He's been through every level, you know, right. of the game. He's been, you know, started to hold an actual championship belt, and he's also a recovering alcoholic. So mm. he has, you know, a little bit of demons that, you know, he's fighting, so to speak. And in that process, he's in his recovery, obviously. So he's a person that's very loyal to the DWL, which is okay. the Duffy Wrestling League. Okay. That's what, you know, that's what he's in. And the reason he's loyal to them is because they were with him through the process of going through rehab and then coming back and accepting me back into the DWL. So right. so you um, act and act. Oh yeah. Yeah, I, I, I do. Uh, you know, I, I hold, I got like monologues on it. Oh, so do you have a love interest though? No, not yet. Not yet. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta work that in, man. You gotta become hey, a, it's a, it's a, it's a, you gotta become a, a leading man. It's, it's an, you know, it's, it's an adult, it's, a, it's an adult show. So, right. Oh. Man. Yeah. yeah, listen, I, I, I saw, I saw Power on Star, so, yeah. <laughs> so I already know. And so, man, like, I, I see all the time on, on your social, you're having things going back with, with co-workers and other people that you act on these shows with. Mm -hmm. Does it have kind of that locker room feel in, in acting so, now? It, it is and then it isn't. So your interaction with the people that you have more scenes with, mm -hmm. you get that locker room. So you don't so you don't really see everybody all the time? Not all the time, no. Oh, okay. So Okay. I may not go on set for six, seven days. All right. Because the scene I'm shooting has most of the time you're seeing Alan uh uh Maldonado. Yes. And that's 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 uh he plays Rooster okay. in the show. And basically I'm like his big brother. I'm trying to, you know, get him to see that what we're doing isn't about just him. We're trying to, you know, what Jack is doing is trying to right. make this a big thing, make the DWL big like WWE stuff, right. WWE like that. So that's who you're seeing. So I do a lot of scenes with him. So we have that camaraderie, like mm -hmm. you said, you see it on social media, right. like me and him and I going back going and forth, back video forth. tape and working out. We did, you know, we worked out a lot together. Okay. At the times, like your ones and your twos, which is uh, Stephen Emil mm -hmm. and Alexander Ludwig, those guys are on set probably four to five days a week sometimes. Right. And where I'm a eight, so I may be on set one day a week. It may be sometimes where I may not be on set at all. It may be some days where I'm on set three, you know, three, four times a week. Bro, that's not like football, bro. It's like, hey, if you were one or a two, you get a lot of reps. Yeah. You down there in the three, that's ah, what we might see that, you, we might right, not. Right, right, right. But you don't have to be there. With football, you still have to be there. Right. You still have to. You still have to prepare. Mm -hmm. With that, you just you know get your get your scenes ready. I do a lot of my stuff either with the guys that are in my scenes. Okay. So you have uh, yeah Trey, he's a uh, Trey Tucker. You have mm -hmm. uh, Robbie uh, Raman. Well, I don't want to say his name wrong, but he's also <laughs> right. That's the and so y'all so y'all y'all could work on the side in most scenes together. I got you. With. So 
that's the person that you run through your scenes with. And would you be surprised, like a lot of actors don't actually run through the scenes with the people that they're in it with. Mm -hmm. That's what I ended up finding out, so. They might uh, get somebody to read it for them and they just Read it for them or just, yeah, like have you read the part of whoever right. it may be and I'll just do my lines. But I like to go through it with actually. I'm gonna tell you what, they, they would hate me. I'd be reading like, proven results. Listen. Clean and greedy. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you like you actually, I thought the hardest thing for me would be to remember my lines, mm -hmm. but it's not. You sit there and you may go through one scene 10, 12 times. Right. So it's not gonna be hard to remember the lines. The hardest thing is trying to get into the emotional mindset of what that scene is supposed I got to be about or, or what it's supposed to bring out. That's the hardest thing. So would you, so as, as far as already getting on this show, will we see you do more stuff? Do, do you enjoy it? Is it something Oh that yeah, I enjoy it a lot. Yeah, I've, I've, I've read for a few other parts. Mm -hmm. I have a possible, uh, actually two things that I'm in the hunt for right now, I'll say. Okay. And uh, Does it another, call for like Big Swole Mean Dude? Yeah. Is that, that yeah. like the name? Like one, one, the one, name? one is a uh, swole mean dude. Well, one is a, is a mercenary. That fits. So, yeah. Can you uh, hold a gun when you got guns, though? Yeah. Like, you could, you could, uh, I just do it you could be like the expendables. I just do it with one. Oh. You see what I'm saying? So, you had to make sure. Okay. Yeah, I just do it with yeah. one. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, uh, but. Yeah, and you know, just guest starring things, you know, here and there. I did the little thing with SWAT. Actually, yep, it, I remember that the independent film nobody has ever seen that I did. I did in 2016 when we were playing. It was the Friday before we went to go play Kansas City there in the playoff game, uh -huh. and it was called uh, "Remembering Amnesia." I played a patient, and I actually did that in season. That's that crazy, Friday. bro. Yeah. Like, I couldn't tell nobody. I'm like, yeah, man, we go to Kansas City and no, lose this you game. Lose? Hey, you know how people, you know how people act. His head wasn't what in it. What did the game? Yeah. cares about his post-career. Yeah. Hey, yeah. I, tell, I tell you what, though, dog. Yeah. If anybody cared about what Sundays looked like, it was you, bro. And I'm so grateful uh, that you joined me. This was huge for me. When you said when you said you would do it, I had to run through the house to tell everybody. But, you know, all my kids old, so everybody was young. <laughs> you, know <what> I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That was it. But I had been telling Keon, man, you know, he's my creative director. I was like, dog, we got James Harrison. Like, we got James Harrison coming up. And for a second, I wasn't the dude that played with you for eight years. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was just, I was just a fan, man. So I'm yeah. so grateful, brother. I appreciate you, my dog. Problem, man. Yes, sir. Now appreciate Underestimated and still I made it In the book of hard knocks, I'm highly educated Nobody told me, looked over, but still dedicated Played in the league for 13, I ain't gotta be favorite Two Super Bowls, Honolulu, I stood with the greatest The thing is this, if never rich, I'm good with my neighbors DB Precision, television, ain't asked for no favors Numbers don't lie, neither do pictures, just look in the papers